as usual, I want to know what you have gleaned, what you have assimilated from you watching the lecture on budgeting, because we need the knowledge to be able to tackle the questions that we want to run ourselves through today. And I posted a question yesterday in the evening. So if you didn't see it, you can see it right now. If you go to the platform, you can see. Um, ideally, we are supposed to have the question with us. If you can have it in a print form or some other form. So that as we go through, sometimes you cannot see it well from the, from the screen I'll share with you. So if you can get your own by your side, that would be good. But I'll try as much as possible to make it appear bigger so you can see from my screen as well. So um, let me begin sharing my screen with you. And then we take input from you first on what budgeting is. what you have gotten from you watching the lecture on budgeting. Okay, so now you should be able to see my screen. And we are doing a tutorial on budgeting. Tutorial on budgeting, because we did the budgeting lecture last week, and we have the lecture link. So we should have watched the lecture as many times as we, 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 we could, so that we can help the lecture. So let's take the key inputs. What did we get from reading on the concept of budgeting? Key points from our reading on budgeting, which is a question to the whole class. Hello? Hi. Hello? Yes, yes, please. The key point here we talk about what a budget is. Please come again. We learn about what a budget is. Budget. What a budget is. What a budget is. So what is it? You have to tell us what it is. If you say <clears throat> we learned about what a budget is, we can write it as a key point. We want to know what you got from what a budget is, so people can learn from it. So what what is a budget? That's one of the key points you get. But don't tell mm -hmm. us what a budget is. Tell us what it is actually. A budget. It's an estimate of income and expenditure within a period of time. Okay, so it's an estimation of income and expenditure. That's what he got from what he read. What did he also get? What did you also get? Let's get all the key points from our reading. Definition of budgets, and from him, what he got was a budget is an estimation of income and expenditure. What did you also get from reading on budgeting? Mr. Obed Mensah. Mr. Obed Mensah, let's see what you what you got from reading on budgeting? So they were saying that um, a budget um, helps us to predict as to what we are coming to spend based on our resources that we are having. Okay. So that's what Mr. Obed got. Mr. Yusif, 
can you help us with what what you got when you were watching the lecture on budgeting and of course apart from the the lecture link i sent to you the textbook i recommended for you the details are explained in there so you have to use the two resources in combination sometimes you may not be where you can be opening books but you still have your phone in your palm you can watch the youtube video from there so that even you, you you make use of the small small time they don't leak away because there's no time you have a lot to do family issues job issues so if you don't tap the small small times and you make them leak away it is going to be a problem but when you are home you can open the textbook the textbook could be having a little more details than the video i do i do the video in few hours but the textbook is actually big okay so you have to read from the textbook and in circumstances where you cannot read, you can watch the video for other explanations. So let's listen to Mr. You see what he had from reading or watching the video. Sir, I've, I've given you the estimation of income and expenditure. Ah, okay, you, you, okay, okay. Thank you. Joseph, Mr. Joseph Okran. Mr. Okran. Hello, Ms. Okran. Ms. Okran is... Hello, sir. Yeah, Ms. Okran. Ms. Okran, we want to hear from you what, what you got it when you were reading on budgeting. Because we did the lecture last week and I gave the assignment that you should read on budgeting, watch the video. I sent a video link to all of you. You had it in your platforms. So we are asking ourselves what we all got it when we were reading the topic on budgeting. So we want to know your side. Uh, so what, uh, 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 what, it's okay. We can hardly hear you. Priscilla, make sure your microphone is off. Hello. Yeah, it's okay. We are listening, but we can hardly hear you. Hello. You can speak better. Yeah, I'm saying that uh, I also understand by watching it. Uh, I had to understand that it helps in highlighting the areas of deviations and also establish appropriate measures to uh, measure up to those deviations okay in okay. respect of planning and controlling okay so highlighting highlighting deviations and responding to those deviations okay so what are the key points yes, Say, let me let me give one again. Yes, please come. Say, we also learned that budget is a financial tool. It's a financial tool which we use to uh, determine uh, expenditure as against revenue. Okay, okay, that's good. So, well, if you had read the textbook, I also read. This is you, Elizabeth. No. No, oh, Priscilla. It's Priscilla. Yes. Okay, Priscilla, let's hear you. I read about the types of budgeting and Good. that we have the top down and the bottom up. The top down is also known as the mandated budgeting. And that is when the senior level management um, prepares the budgets. And the bottom up is when each department and prepares its own budget and it's also known as participative budgeting okay you read that from the textbook right yes i did that's that's very good that's very impressive and please do well to read from the textbook as opposed to reading from some other general sources so that is what priscilla was talking about is on approaches to budgeting we can do it 
top down, which is more detected from the top down. I mean, force down on all of us to implement. That's the top top down approach. Also referred to in some uh, situations as mandated budgeting approach. And the opposite of that is the bottom up. The bottom up, we start the budgeting process by soliciting the input from the very basic unit of the organization, even from the cleaner. And then we build those inputs up to the top. That's the bottom up. They all have their pros and cons, and they are all in the textbook. You're supposed to read together. Some of these things, we, we don't teach them. We don't waste the time to teach them. Since you have the textbook, you have to read together. Then we focus on the technical areas. All right. So thank you very much. So approaches to budgeting. All right, good. Who wants to say, I need just two people to say the last two points and then we can move on. Emilia, say something. Emilia, are you in class? Hello, Emilia. Lizzie, Elizabeth, are you in class? Hey, but they show here they are in class, but they don't respond. Elizabeth, Amelia, okay, Mr. Yali, say something. Ebenezer Yali. <coughs> Ebenezer Yali, we are listening to you. Say something. Say something about what you got from reading on budgeting. Zayali. Lizzie. Lizbeth Alpha, what did you get from reading on the budgeting topic? We are sharing ideas on what we all gathered from our reading. <clears throat> Because that's the basis of solving the question that I posted to you yesterday. Lizzie, let's hear what you gathered when you were reading on budgeting. Lizbeth, are you in class? Hello, Lizbeth. Elizabeth is absent. Amelia Mumford is absent. Ibn Izayali is absent. Peter Dominic. Peter. Sir. Let's hear your take on what budgeting is. What you got from reading on budgeting? Budget helps us to forecast into the future. Okay, budget helps us to forecast into yes, the future. Yes, let's listen. Continue, please. Uh, it enables the organization to uh, um, know, uh, know the revenue that they will be generating and the expenditure that they will be incurring in an ensuing year. OK, that's good. So please, all of us will go back and read on the topic again from the textbook that I gave to you. 
the te the textbook gives a very good um, setting to the topic. In fact, when I was writing, I was thinking of most of the things that we know already that it's speaking about budgeting. So you see a lot of quotations before before the actual topic on budgeting. And we talked about, we even picked some quotation from the Bible, I think from Luke, I've forgotten of the specific chapter. And the message there is simply saying, which one of you, if you are to build a mansion, will not first of all sit down and consider whether you have enough resources to get it completed, but we'll just start it without calculating whether you can do it or not, so that in the middle, you get stuck for people to laugh at you. And that is talking about planning. And that's what budgeting is. Budgeting is a planning tool. You do not sit there till the eventualities fall on you. You can use what has happened previously, what is happening currently, to give you some information about what is likely to happen. And that guides your steps into the future. That's all budgeting is about. There are a lot of other quotations that are very beautiful and all speak about budgeting. Read from the textbook and you get all those information. So basically what we want to do now is to look at the question because the assumption is that you have you have had that lecture. You have watched the video, you have read the textbook. I have given you the textbook about two weeks ago. So nothing prevents you from nothing prevents you from reading it. So it's assumed the lecture is made. So we are coming to do a tutorial. Give me just about one minute. Uh, please, sorry for um, wasting time. 
So that's what we, we're going to do. The assumption is that we already we have all read the topic and we have understood it. And we want to test our understanding with this question. Everybody should have a copy of this question. I just composed it yesterday. And this question is going to help us run through most of the budgets, the separate budgets that we want to learn how to prepare and the meaning of how uh, they are prepared. Okay, so let's run ourselves through the question. I hope everybody can, everybody has access to the question. Is that correct? Do we all have access to the question? Yes, yes, sir. yes, yes. Okay, so I'm yes. reading through the, the question more, a little bit speedily for the first time. And then maybe we will use just about some five minutes to read it individually to kind of get the detail of the question. And then we will all begin to do the solution. Okay. So question one is the one on the budgeting. The other question is actually on CVP, which we have, we are done dealing with. But it will be there for you to try your hands on just to kind of so keep you um, updated on that topic. So question one, Comfort Limited manufactures and sells a single product called Adepa. The business is preparing its semi-annual budget from July to December for the year 2021. The following standard revenue and cost data is available. Selling price per unit of the product, which is Adepa, is 12 Ghana cities. Material costs per unit is two kilograms at 2.4 per kilogram. So one unit of Adepa uses two kilograms and one kilogram of that raw material cost two cities 40 pesos. So you can do the simple multiplication to know the material cost per unit of Adepa. Labor cost per unit is one city 80 pesos. Direct expenses per unit is one city 20 pesos. So this is the standard uh, cost data and revenue data that we have. Let's continue. Sales in June, and you have to remember they are all as, as a budget. So these are all uh, estimated figures. Sales in June and July 2021 are forecasted to be 10,000 cities, sorry, 10,000 units in each of the two months. As a direct result of marketing expenditure of 95,000 in August 2021, sales are expected to be 11,000 units in that month, August, and to increase by 1,000 units in each month from September to December 2021. Sales after December 2021 are expected to remain at the December 2021 level. Twenty-five percent of sales are paid for when they occur. It means twenty-five percent of the sales are cash sales, and the remaining seventy-five percent of the sales are paid for in the month following sales. So that one we give one month credit. So we sell. 75% of all the sales we make, 75% of all the sales we make are on credit for a period of one month. 25% is on cash basis. Inventories of finished goods at the end of each month are planned to be 20% of the expected sales for the following month. Inventories of materials at the end of each month are planned to be 50% of the material required for the following month's production. Materials are paid for 
in the month following purchase. Labor and direct expenses are paid for in the month in which they occur. Overheads for production, administration, and distribution is expected to be 34,000 Ghana cities per month, which amount includes a depreciation charge of 12,000 per month. These overheads are payable in the months in which they occur. The firm pays interest twice per year in March and in September. The cash balance at the end of each, sorry, at the end of June 2021 is expected to be 50,000 Ghana cities required. Prepare all the relevant budgets on a month by month basis for the six month period from July to December. Okay. So that's the question. Let's individually go through it using about two to, two, two to five minutes, and then we'll come back and solve them together.
Okay, so we should be done with reading through the question. So now, let's see how the solution goes. All the relevant budgets should be prepared for this particular business. If you read through the question very well, you can note that they have given us sales forecasts. And from your reading, you should have determined that we use the sales forecasts to prepare our sales budget. And let me ask, before they come up with the sales forecasts, what, what, what are some of the things that are considered? What are some of the factors that go into determining the sales forecast? Because you cannot just sit up, I mean, one day and say, okay, I think my sales forecast will be 10,000, 11,000, 12,000 for months one, two, three. No. Those figures before you come up uh, with them should be informed by certain things that are more scientific, that are more accurate, and that is more likely to lead you into getting a perfect uh, determination. So what are some of the factors that uh, go into the determination of the sales forecasting? It's a question to the class. And these things are directly in the textbook. So I just want you to recall from the textbook. What, what are the factors that go into the determination of the sales forecasts. Okay. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, why can uh, um, my cost of material can be used to determine the forecast in the future? Cost of material, how? Yeah. Um, uh, let's, say, let's say, let's say, let me, let me re-ask the question. Let's say you want to do your sales budget. In the first place, let's ask, what is the sales budget? What's the sales budget? Let's ask that question, answer it first. Then we follow up with the other question. What is sales budget? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Sales budget. Is that my understanding? Sales budget uh, is about projection of projection of sales volume to values of each product. Projection of sales volume to values of each product. Okay, so that's what he thinks. What do you also think about sales budget? And uh, please uh, excuse my words. These kind of responses tell me we have not read anything from the textbook. We have read the video to we didn't watch. And it makes the job difficult, I'm telling you for a fact. Emilia told me that the class uh, feels that some of some of the expressions I use are hard on them. And I apologize about that. It's, 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 it's not the best. But please, um, what we are also doing as students is, is really bad if you're not reading. And I can see it directly that you're not reading. There's a textbook I've given you. These questions I'm asking you are things directly in the textbook. We did this lecture last week. I referred you to the section of the book to read and I sent you a video link to watch in addition. And I sent you a question. I told you we will even do a tutorial on this before we do the next topic. So you knew that this is how the, the lesson is going to go. But the responses that I get, they are not totally wrong responses, but they are responses that speak that you have not read the information I gave you. 
Okay, so let's move ahead. I want another person to say what he thinks of sales budgets. It is what the company expects to sell or the volume or the um, the city amounts that the company expects to sell and the foreseeable future or for a particular period. Okay, so the sales for the sales budget gives us the expected volume and revenue that the company expects to make from the product itself. So that's simply what the sales budget is. We are thinking oh, based on based on um, based on some information. This is what we expect to be our sales volume. We expect to sell next month maybe 200 units of the product. Next two months, 300 units of the product. Next three, four, five months, we expect to sell 600, 700, 800, and so on and so forth. Okay. And the revenues that each of these quantities we expect to sell will bring. That is what the sales budget is made of. Good. And I was asking you before you come to say that I expect to sell 500 units of the product next month, 1,000 units next two months, and so on and so forth. What, what will inform your determination of those values, 500,000 and so on? What will inform your determination of those values? Or you will just go and sleep and have a dream and God tells you, okay, I think your next month's sales volume should be 500. That's not what it is. We don't dream about this. This is not a religious issue. So what do we do to come up with those figures? That's the question I'm asking. What are the factors that will inform the determination of the sales, the projected or the forecasted sales values? And they are in the book I just gave you. So give Sir. me a Yes, sir. Why can you use your previous year's sales to, to project your future sales? Good. And all of these things are in the textbook. So sometimes that's where I get the impression that we are not reading. So, I mean, I'm yet to get my textbook. I was out of town, so I haven't got my yet. So please get it today and read for me. If you get it, try to read the whole of budgeting uh, today. It means so, you have an appearance. When I come to Takra, I was out of town for about a month, so I used to join the so, class at some mm -hmm. Please try and get it as early as possible for me. Because, yes, you know, sir. we don't have so much time. And even though we are accounting students, the fact is that sometimes we are all scratchy about some of the concepts. And at this level, they will pitch the question a little bit high. For okay. example, if you are being asked a question on cost volume profit analysis, it will never be on a single product. It will be on a multiple product concept. And the question can be a little bit complicated, which means you have to start reading today to get a solid understanding of the concept so that when you, you are posed with a, any question, because you already have a deep knowledge, you can just deal with the issue. It's very important, your reading. Your reading is everything. If you read and you don't even come to class, it is better than coming to class and you don't read. Yeah, it's All right, very sir. thank yeah. you. Okay, so apart from past sales records, which can guide us to determine our future sales uh, expectations. What, again, can help us in accurately determining our sales forecasts? He, he just made mention of past sales trend. That is correct. What, again? What? Uh, research, like market market research. Good, that's good. So the market research 
Well, well, in addition to, okay, fine, we'll, we'll have our sales pass record. The market research will kind of ask people about the expectations of the product, how they want it to be, and, and, and so on and so forth. That can also give you some information about um, how many people like the way your product is like, and therefore, how many people are likely to buy the product. Yes, that's also good. It's an input market research. What again? So demand. Demand can also determine. Okay, demand. But explain the demand to to me as a lay person. The, the, the how, demand of the product. The demand of the product. Can, you can can use the demand of the product to determine the future sales. The demand. Don't you see? Now, the number of people price. who are requesting. But people, number of people who are requesting for a particular product that you are selling, or you are in need of it. So how different is this demand from your past sales trend? You can merge the two to speak it as, as one thing. Past sales okay. records tell us about how uh, people have liked our products. And maybe on top of that, with some market research, we'll get some fine tuning of that kind of data. Another thing that will guide us is what is happening generally in the economy. For example, when the country was hit hard by doing so in some years back, all the businesses that had their customers as businesses using electricity as the main source of their input will be hit hard. And if your customers are hit hard, it means they can buy and it will affect your sales. So that should also be factored into how much sales you expect to be able to do in the coming periods, based on what is currently happening. Yes, sir, so, just like the COVID-19 pandemic. Exactly. So what is generally happening yes, so the economy the in general? Is Sometimes it is not just the local economy, the global economy, what is happening, like COVID-19 issue that she just mentioned. That is a global impact. It can be local thing like Doomso, as I said, which will affect your own business and your customers. And you have to factor in all of these factors. Yes, sir. Please sir, what about competitors? Can that one also... Exactly, be what competitors are also doing. What competitors are doing what competitors are doing will affect your ability to sell so you have to put all of these issues into consideration before you say okay i think i can sell this much next month and that's much the other month you you don't just go and sit in some room and take some club or beer and you write those figures the business will collapse the determination of those figures should be <clears throat> should be informed by some scientific thoughts, as we are discussing, which all other things being equal will yield some realistic figures, even though they are estimated figures. Okay, so that's the sales budget and how the sales budget is prepared. The factors that we even uh, consider in coming up with the forecasted sales volume all right then when you have your sales budget which basically is telling you about i mean upon consideration of a lot of factors it's telling you about how much you expect to sell in the following periods when you get your sales budget prepared in that way, now you need to prepare yourself to produce that much that you have determined that people will buy. And that brings you to your production budget. Brings you to your production budget. So you can see that from the sales budget, from the sales budget, You move straight to production. Okay. The 
production budget will pick input from the sales budget, which is about the units that you think people will buy of your products. Then we send the data to the production department. That's the unit that they should produce, right? But in business, things do not go in a straight line. Things, we are not in, in a 100% perfect environment such that those estimations that you did. And of course, the reason why, I mean, the fact that they are estimations even tell you that in actuality, there can be some plus or minus, right? So we do not produce strictly the quantities that our sales budgets have produced. Because in business, uh, we can have a situation where things can go above what we were expecting, things can go below what we're expecting. So we add some planned units of the product. We call them planned ending inventory to what we estimated from the sales budget just to kind of make an allowance of if there is some um, unanticipated demand, we still can meet without uh, losing those customers and, and therefore money, profit. So I'm telling you how the production budget is constituted. So the input from the sales budget on how much we think people will buy, plus some amount we add to that input because there can be uh, over demand along the line. And if you already have some inventory from the beginning, that should be subtracted. Then the residual value tells us the amount we should actually produce, which will meet the estimated sales uh, in the sales budget, plus any anticipation of over demand in the in the coming periods and also taking care of any uh, beginning balances that we have of the product already so that's about the production budget if we estimate our production budget which is this is how much we have to produce then we go and produce but what do we use to produce we use raw materials to produce you use raw materials to produce Okay, so you need to do your budget for raw materials. Then you have to see that there will be a direct link between the production budget and the raw materials budget. Because you will get how much raw materials that you should budget for from knowing the, 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 the quantities of the finished goods that, finished goods that you need to produce. So the raw materials budget will pick input from the production budget. The production budget, the number of units we have to produce. Then each unit that we need to produce, what quantities of materials are required. That will give you the estimated materials required to meet the production. And just like we said of the production budget, in the raw materials budget too, we make provision for some planned additional inventory. The reason is, uh, apart from the unexpected sale rise that can happen in the future, there is also the tendency that some materials will suffer from what we call normal loss. For example, if you are dealing with a raw material like petrol, petrol undergoes respiration so quickly not only petrol, I'm just, petrol may be the extreme. Even normal water can undergo respiration. So by the close of the period, some content is lost. We can get some spillovers. It's like you are dealing with sugar. When the sugar, sugar falls down in the sun, you can't pick them. There's nothing you can use them for. So every production suffers from some of these normal losses. Okay. So if we pick the input from the production budgets, we have to also add some additional, we call them planned 
closing inventory. We add them so that in case we suffer some normal losses, in case we get some over demand along the line, we will have some materials that we intentionally added to kind of cushion us against those unexpectations. And of course, if you also have some materials at the beginning, we subtract. So that is the architecture of the raw materials budget. There is not only raw material that we need for the production, we need labor. So you have to do labor budgets. Labor is normally paid as hours you have worked times the rate per hour. And it's a very simple thing to do. Okay, so we estimate the hours required to produce a single unit of the product. When we multiply by the total unit of the product, we get the total hours required. What is the rate per hour that we pay labor? You multiply by that rate, you have the budget that you should make available for labor activities, for paying labor. So that will be the constituent of the labor budget. Then, apart from raw material cost and labor cost, we also have some other costs like direct expenses. So we prepare a budget for the direct expenses. We have overheads. We prepare a budget for the overheads. And if we finish with all of these budgets, we can combine them to prepare our budgeted statement of profit or loss or budgeted income statements to be to be precise. Yes. So let's go back to the information. I've given you the overview of all the budgets. This information is information that you should have had from reading what you were taxed to read. But I've taken the opportunity to give you the overview. So what we're going to do right now is you are going to go through the questions individually by yourselves and attempt the preparation of the budget. Read the question and attempt solving the question. I have given all the description. Uh, we are giving ourselves uh, 15 minutes for that exercise. And I'll give you the opportunity to share your screen so we discuss your results. And I'll call you at random. That's how we're going to do it. So let's give ourselves um some 15 minutes for that and you can you can discuss among yourselves for, to clarify some things that you want to to, to get yourself clarified on. okay so you're on your own you can discuss and in 15 minutes time we will we will call people to show their presentations I'm <laughs> Yes. Amen. Take the take the lead. <laughs> we'll start. Please start. I'm I'm, I'm listening. Miss <laughs> La. Hey God. <laughs> Priscilla, take the lead. Miss <laughs> Okra. <laughs> Hello. Uh -huh. 
So let's start it. Uh, is it uh -huh. this budget, right? Yes. Uh, so let's start preparing the sales budget. Okay. So what are the information that we need? So you need your, you need your sales in units. Mm -hmm. Multiply by your selling price. Okay. For each month. And according to the question, yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sales in June and July have forecasted to be 10,000 10, units in each of the two months. So, to start off, let's set our months first. Uh, we start from June to June to let's say January, let's 2021, 2022. Please, can you hear me? Yeah. So, let me try and see if I can share my screen. Let's continue. So, this is yes. So, the sales budget we start from a um, June, uh, July, August, September, October, November, December. Uh, okay. Then our sales units, they said 10,000, 10,000 units for, for June and July, right? Yes. Yeah. Then, as a direct result of marketing expenditure, okay, this one is very important. Sales are expected to be 11,000 in August. So, August sales will be 11,000. And August, and to increase by 1,000 units in each month from September to December. Yeah. So, from August, we add we add thousand 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 yes. So September will be twelve thousand, right? Yes. October will be thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand. November fourteen thousand. And December fifteen thousand. Yes. Because even though June is not part of the uh, semi annual budget, it will have an effect because yes, 25% yes. of the expense for one of yes, in the in yes. the following month. Yes. So, so that we are starting from June June to January. Yes. Yes. So we are it. We are it. We we started we started in June. Yes, it should be June to December. Yes, June to January. Let's make it January, right? Yes. Okay. But we are not when supposed we to we get any December. Yes, but uh, yes. to get your point, you need something from the uh, January. So we can do it that way. We can do it January, that way. So so we, can do it. we do that. Yes, yes. So finally, when you are present, you just start from July to December. That's all. Okay. Mm. So. And the selling price is um, 12 cities. 12 cities. Yes, 12 cities. So, so multiply all by 12 cities. So for June. Yes, all by 12. So, so, so. 
and you know we have 120 mm. 120,000 mm. July 120 August 132,000 all right. Uh, 144,000 for September. 156, 168, 182. Okay, so this will be our sales budget. Can you go to the next? Man, are you sharing your screen? No, I, I don't know if I can do that. I, I didn't see an option there. The lecture was still presenting, so I don't know if I can present. But I'm working, so when he gives us the permission, I'll just present it. Okay. So let's go to our production budget now. Okay. So with the product production, we mm -hmm. need to know uh, how we can get it. We need to know how we can solve that one. So with production. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, so the production, the first step is to know your sales for the period, right? Okay. And the second one is you add your closing inventory. right? Yes, the same thing. And uh, you have to know the difference. We have to know the difference. There is a difference between the production and the material. So with this one, we are going to use the one relating to the finished goods. OK. That then comes to 12. Yes. So closing. Okay, closing. And we let's we let's, uh, we let's open it up. Get us um, the production for the period. Can you continue? All right. Should I continue? We want to write the thing that we yes. from uh, yeah, okay. okay. All right. So I, I said we it sales plus closing stuff minus opening stuff. Now, if we talk here, the value is how much? I want us to finish first, then we just start. Okay. Same. So, uh, 
Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, the twenty percent inventory, the twenty percent of uh, inventory of finished goods, not the one we use as our closing inventory. That's the Please one. Hold on. Let me let me check. Let me let me look at it. I was doing something else. Um, okay. Inventories of finished goods at the end of the month are planned to be twenty percent of the, the expected sales on the flowing month. Inventories of materials at the end of which month are planned to be twenty percent of the material required for finished goods at the end of which month are planned to be twenty percent of the expected sales for the flowing month. Yes, I have Mohammed. Yes, yeah, please. Now, what were you saying? I was asking the, the closing inventory, the 20%. Mm -hmm. um, I was asking whether that is what we use as our finish, our closing inventory, finish closing inventory. That's, mm, our... that's what I think. So that may wait 20%. For July, the don't for you will be for July, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm here. Hello, Brisa. Yes. Hey. I'm here. Of calculating, you need to also probably, you need to also bear in mind that we are projecting for production. So in this case, there can be as, as, uh -huh. as, as, yes. Uh, so we need to also go through it, go through it when we, if we can get that normal cut, like uh, if possible. Um, if we can. Presley. Uh, yes. Please, the twenty-five. Mr. Oka was saying something, but I can't hear him. Yes, I also can hear. Okay, I mean, okay, okay. I can, I can come again. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm saying that uh, the lecture just highlighted on the, the production aspect that in the course of production there can be an increment of loss. Okay. And I'm saying that in as much as we are calculating for production. Uh, budget, we have rich production uh, calculation. So we need to look into it whether we can have that loss in it. Okay, and how do we do that? Mr. Okan, please let me answer you. Mr. Okan. Hello, I'm listening. Yeah, he said that in normal production, there can be a loss. That's why they, they make room for a uh, plant closing inventory or plant um, closing material inventory. So you don't have to find it. It will be given to you in the question. They will tell you that, okay, because we, we are not sure, let's add this inventory as a closing stock so that we can take care of such losses or whatever. Mr. Alcan, do you get it? So we are not coming to well, it. It's already given to you because they, they assume. Let, let me read this to you. From the questionnaire, they said that um, inventories of finished goods at the end of each month are planned to be. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so you don't know uh, if you have inventories, inventories at the end of the period or not. But they are just estimating a portion for you. Okay? So that in case your inventories are not enough, you can add that 20%. Mr. Okan. Well, I'm getting it. Uh -huh. And the same for the materials as well. They just plan. So months of each month are planned to be 50%. 
it's just an estimate to take care of such losses. So if you don't even care any loss, that's why it's even a budget or estimate in the first place. It's not real. It's something yes. you are planning that, yes, it can happen. So let's use this. Can you continue? Yes, I can okay. continue. It's going to Yeah, so um, with the sales, um, he said that we are doing the production, right? So now we know our sales units. And our closing inventories are 20% of the expected sales for the following month. So for June, for June, it will be 20% of the sales unit from July, right? So that will be for July, right? We are looking for, yes, let's start from June. Let's start everything from June. Yes. Uh, yeah, so we are looking for of June. What? It's not that okay, so okay. value. Okay, okay, we are doing for the production budget. Eh? Yes. But, uh, okay. um, and Mohamed, yes. you have to understand that there are okay. units and there are values. Labor, expenses. Mohamed, are you following? We, we have yeah, units okay. and values. So, okay. we are not doing the values. But for the sales budget, we have the units and the value calculated already. Okay. So yes. In this yes. case, yes. we are only doing units. The units, okay. So, okay. Yeah, so if okay. you want the closing stock in units, units. it's the 20% okay. of 10,000 units for sales unit in july okay uh -huh. so don't work it on the one twenty thousand yes yes that'll be two thousand okay we get it then we do okay. the same for july by calculating 20 percent on other sales which is eleven thousand units okay so you are working for the closing as yes you have to do it for all because okay. We will need the closing stock of one period is the opening of another. So let's do all yes. the closing stock for, for the months. Under the production budget. Yes, under the production budget. Okay. So, uh, yes. The 20% of the 11,000 in Hagen. Yes. That one will be for September. That not oh, please stop. No, that one will be for July. No, don't don't do the opening stock now. Just concentrate on the closing the, stock the for closing, each and every single stock. month. Uh, the closing yes, stock. Yes, for each and every month. Yes. You know, closing stock. So, the closing stock for June will be for July, right? Yes. Then yes. July so will be for. Stock. Yes. This like I can get you. Let's, let, let's wait here. Let's finish with the closing stock. I don't want to yeah. combine the two. I want us to complete all the closing stock. Then from there, we proceed with the opening stock so that they, we all understand it. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. So let's now let's do for the closing stock for every month. Mm -hmm. So, so G will be, yes, will be 10 percent, 20% on 10,000, which is July sales. Yeah, two thousand. Yes. And for July, and for July will be twenty percent on August sales of eleven thousand. It's all grand. Okay. I'm here. But you are you following? I'm here. Yeah, but are you following? <laughs> I'm following. Okay. Then. I guess closing stock will be twenty percent of September sales, which is twelve thousand. Okay. okay. And now I'll be two thousand four hundred. Then September closing stock will be twenty percent of thirteen thousand for October. Two thousand six hundred. Okay. October, twenty percent of fourteen thousand to eight hundred. 
thousand. November twenty percent of fifteen thousand. Yes, and then December. That's why I said we should add January. So yes. December will December will be twenty percent of January because the. The, from December, the sales will be constant, so it can also be 15,000. January sales will be 15,000. Okay. You, you understand? Yes. From the question you said, then, sales after December 21 are expected to remain at the same. Okay. At the 20, December 2021 level, you get it. So January sales will also be 15,000. Okay. Uh, so out of that, you can calculate 15, uh, 20 percent on that for the closing stock, which is also three thousand. Okay. Should we proceed to opening stock? Yes, please. Should I continue? Yes, please. You can continue. Mama, it's only you who is responding. Hello. Yes. Can we continue? Like we are done with the opening stock. So I want to move on to the, hey, the closing stock. So I want to move on to the closing stock. Can okay. We, so can, can we continue? Yes, I'm listening. I don't want to interrupt. That's why I'm listening. OK. Emilia. Emilia, I don't see what I do. Okay. So opening stock. Now opening stock for the first period, which is June, is zero. Mohamed. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, opening stock for June will be zero. It'll be zero, yeah. Yeah, because they didn't give us uh, the sales from um me then for july july will be july will be 2000 july will be 2000 that's the closest stock of june the closest stock of where the first month becomes the opening stock of the next month so this one there is easy you just shift the, the closing stock uh, to July, then from July to August. Okay. That okay. Was June. Yes. So, so closing stock of June will be 2000, and it will be the opening stock of July, 2000. Okay. Closing wow. stock of July, 2200, yeah. becomes the opening stock of August, 2200. Yeah. Closing stock of 2400 becomes opening stock of September 2400. The closing stock of September 2600 becomes the opening stock of October so 2600. Closing stock of October 2800 becomes the opening stock of November. So that one will be 2800. Then the closing stock of November will be 3,000, becoming the opening stock for December, also 3,000. Can we continue? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. So, so now our production will be sales plus closing stock minus opening stock. Okay. The production in units, the production in units now becomes our sales plus closing stock minus opening stock. So for June will be, Mohamed, June will be? Yes, June will be 12,000. Is it not Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 12,200. 12, Where did you get the 12,200? You add the 10,000 plus the 2,200. Uh -huh. Yes. 
That would be a then top less, one. Then you less 2,000. I wanted to finish it so that we'll come to the left. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we'll ah, finish okay. the first one. I'm not coming there. Okay. So in August, 11,000 plus 2,400, get 13,400. Yes. No, uh, ah, okay, you are doing for okay. Yes, continue. Then September, we have four, okay, 12,000 plus 2,000 to friend, we have 14,000. That's September. Mm. Then October, we have 15,800. No. Yes, yes, all right. Yes, please. Complete it straight away. Okay, okay. Just did that to the opening stock, then let's get the production in units. Otherwise, we'll confuse at the point. Okay. So let's start from uh, June. June. Mm -hmm. So the June, I think 12,000 minus zero, right? Yes. So we have about 12,000. Mm -hmm. Then in July, we have 12,200 minus 200. Thousand. That will give fourteen. Ten thousand one. Ten thousand two hundred. Okay. Hello. Yeah, please. Are you um holding the closing stock to the sales and subtracting the opening stock? Yes. Yes, please. I thought it should be adding the opening stock to the sales and then subtracting the closing stock. No, it's the other way around. The production other way around. Budget, yes, production budget. Uh, it's like um, you sold ten thousand. You 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 have a closing stock of three thousand. Then you take away what you started with. Okay, so then it means you produce this amount. Okay, okay, I get it. Okay, yes. So for August, Ms. Dogan, August, August production will be how much? Oh. Dogan. I think I guess will be eleven thousand Emilia. Come on. Come on. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Should you continue? John. John. Hello. John Benya. John. Yes, it's okay. I'm uh, following you. I don't think the election will allow you to work with share your screen so that that will all get there. Oh, you're okay. Okay.
Okay. Closest to ten thousand, ten thousand, eleven thousand, eleven thousand, twenty percent. Evan. Yes. yes. Uh, Evan, please, are, are we done with the, pro the production? Yes. I have uh, the less in the opening inventory now. I think that's all. Yeah, that's all. So okay. 12,000, 10,200, 11,200, 12,200, 13,200, 14,200, then 16,000. Okay. And where do you go next? Material budget. Okay. Yeah, so the material budget, <laughs> the material budget is what, what is delaying my work, but let's try. I, I know that the material budget is made up of uh, the usage, the usage in units. Uh, then you add, you add uh, closing, closing material, closing material units, and you less opening material units. Like material we used in the production. We want to calculate for the material used in production. Determine how much we purchased. Emilia, who are you? <laughs> my, my, my challenge now is the material usage, the material we used in production. Okay. And so that he, one. He said, yes, I want the units. Uh -huh. So when yes. we get the units, we multiply by 2 kg. Yes. And the units. And the unit, I, I was thinking, it will be based on the production, and because uh -huh. we want to use to produce. Yes. 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 Yeah, you are right. Or usage. But yes. My 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 challenge now is: Do you multiply the two kg by the production units, or you wait when you get the final material purchased, then you multiply by the two kg? Okay, so what are you going about? You are doing with the um, explain how you're going about the calculation. Yes, I I know what to do, but I'm just confused yeah. with what you need to oh. use as the usage, the material we used in the production. Yes, we calculated for that one. Yes, yes. I mean, I, mean, I was thinking that we multiply the two kg by the two point four peg. Kilogram. No, so that that one, you'll, be, you'll be entering the value, the value that's aspect. Give us the ah, okay. Yes. Then we'll, then we'll yeah. just pick the two, two kg and multiply by the unit of production. Unit yes. of production. Yes, that's mm. all. Okay. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm just confused. Once again. Hello. 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 Evelida. Yes. Evelida. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm also going through how do you call it uh, the textbook as the man. Uh, uh, okay, textbook. Okay. The, the, the textbook is saying that to get, get your material, direct material usage, mm -hmm. is that it's a set of finished goods to be produced times quantity okay. of raw materials needed to produce okay. one unit of the goods. Okay. 
Okay, so you have to multiply before, not after. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was on the right path, but I was just confused. So um, so what we do is we pick the production in units, then we multiply by the two kg, right? Okay, okay. Uh, to get to get the total material used in production. Yes. Okay. So first we have to introduce um, production. Yeah. Then we multiply multiply by the two C the two kg. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm here. Sorry, there's noise here. I say your microphone is on, so it is giving us some feedback. Evan. Yes, my man. Anyway, forward. Are you, are yes. you on it? So, after. June will have to be 4,000, right? So, yeah, June will be 24,000. July yeah, will be 20,400. Okay. August will be 22,400. Okay. September 24,400. 26,400. 28,400. 30,000. Okay. Then, 30, then maybe 30,400. You know. Then the closing stock. Nice. We add closing stock. I thought I would have left the opening stock before. Okay, no. No, you let's add closing stock before we do the last one. Okay. So the closing stock for June. From the question said, um, um, inventory of material at the end of each month are planned to be fifty percent of material required for the following month's production. Okay. 50 man, a 50% 50 of materials required for okay. the following month's production. So material required, now we know. So oh. after, is there is the, what we com just computed, right? Okay, yes. So, so July will be 
Yes. Right. Uh -huh. So. So in this case, you are going to, uh, like, get fifty percent of that material required, and you add it back. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, so it's not on production, but it's on material required. You get it. And the and material needed to to produce uh, for July is um twenty four hundred. That's production times number of units. Uh, number of units which is two kg. Hello. We can hear you, Evan. We can hear you. We can hear you. You don't want to get any feedback. Okay. So, so based on our production, now we know our materials, material required for each month. That's production for each month times the usage, the the usage in the material in uh, material per production or per unit, material required per unit, which is the two cities, the two kg. Yes, and that one gives us the material required in each production. Then the closing stock is 50% of the next month's material requirement. Material at the end of each month, I plan to 50% for the following month, okay. So that one, for the first one, the closest stock will be 10 to 100. Please, did anyone get 10 to 100? Yes, please, add 10 to 100 for June. For June, July was how much? 11 to 100. Okay. Uh, 12 to 100 for August. Okay. okay. Uh, 13 to 100 for September. All right. 14,200 October. 14,200 October. 15,000. 15, November. Then, uh, then 12,000. 12,000. Oh, no, it's not 12,000. It's also 15,000. It's also 15,000. Yes. By January, would have been 30,000 because yes. they're constant. 15. Yes, yes. That's why I say we should. We should yes. repeat the the general yeah. or bring the general so that we can get for December. Yeah. All right. Now the opening stock for June will be zero. There was no opening stock. Okay. Then for July. It will be the closing for June. Okay. So that will be 10,200. Mm. For August, closing for July, 11,200. 11, September, closing for August, 200. Yes. 14,200. 15,000. Okay. So the net effect will be so material purchase for June will be 
200. Yes, please. July 21, 21 400. 400. I guess 23, 400. Okay. Uh, hello, Eda. Yes. Uh, with the direct material purchase, mm. uh, there's something here. I just want to go and bring it to your notice if it's relevant. Okay. Uh, he said that to arrive at direct material pages mm -hmm. is equal to the desired ending inventory of direct okay. materials okay. minus expected usage, a plus expected usage and beginning inventory of direct materials. I can repeat it. Yes, repeat. Is the direct materials pages is mm -hmm. equal to the ending inventory of direct materials that's closing stock yes plus expected that's, usage that's usage materials required or used in production minus, mm -hmm. okay, minus beginning inventory of direct materials that's opening inventories so it's the same yes. thing that we have done it's just that okay Okay, you talk. Finish. Finish and let me continue. Oops, okay, I'll finish. Say that before you arrive at mm -hmm. the direct material pages. At the mm -hmm. Your line is not clear. I can't hear anything. So good. Oh, I'm saying that uh, yeah. that's what probably uh, I have. Yeah, yes, it's the same thing that we use though. Adam, it's just that, so, yes, uh, clear it for me. The only difference, the only difference was that from the question, eh, material cost is two kg per unit at two point four Ghana cities. So meaning that Sorry. in every in every material. In every unit produced, they no, use I two kg. Okay, let me check if I did it. I will unmute you. Okay. Hello. Zogan. Hello, class. Class. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, we've done enough. <clears throat> enough personal discussion. So let's all kind of bring our ideas together at this point in time and see how the solution looks like. Uh, this is what I want to do. I want to show all the presentations using spreadsheets. The fundamental calculations are the same as you will take your pen and punch your calculator. But the reason why I want to go with the spreadsheet approach is that you, you and I, we all know that if you have to do any of the things we are learning in the classroom at a job place, you will not take a pen and take a calculator or take a marker and a board to solve that problem. The basic business tool is a spreadsheet and budgeting, it's actually a spreadsheet thing. So let's do it the right way. Just how we, we are learning to do it in practice in life. And even though the exam will test you on no spreadsheets, the fundamental calculations are the same. This times this, this multiplied by this, this plus this, they are the same as we are doing it on the spreadsheets and as we will do it on a paper or on a board. Is that is that correct? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. Okay, that's that's okay. So we are now going to the question. So let me open my spreadsheets. Amelia, I think you can restart your device. Amelia is having a problem uh, participating in the discussion. When she talks, it doesn't come. And I see mm -hmm. her at my end as uh, a muted person. Where's Amelia? Yeah, Amelia, your mic is on now. Talk and let's see if it will come through. 
So check the volume from your side. Maybe the volume is on a very low level. Check your volume, your device's volume, raise it and talk. If you can hear, we will tell you. It still doesn't come, we don't hear you. So check, check yeah, your- yeah. Yes. Should you Since you log out and log in again, yes. you come. Camilla, please try to do this. Log out. Log out and log in again. So yeah, you can get out of the meeting and come again. Okay, so this, this is my spreadsheet. So we are going to do them. If you look at the question very well, you can see that the relevant budgets, the relevant budget will start from the sales budget. When you are solving you yourself, you see that the budgets are connected. Sales budget, it will come to production budget. It will come to materials purchase budget. We will come to labor budget, uh, direct expenses budget, um, overhead budget, we can prepare our budgeted income statement and then cash budgets we might not have enough information to prepare budgeted balance sheet or budgeted statement of financial position but these ones if you go through the question you will have enough information to prepare these budgets so let's start sales budget the sales budget, as we explained, so I'm going straight to the point. We have, so let me put here, sales budget. I'll try to zoom so we can all see what we are doing. Okay, so sales budget. Sales budget. For we are doing it for the months of June. So we have June. Up to we are doing it for the the second half of the year, June up to December. Okay. So let's do June up to December. And as I'm doing this, also take the opportunity to learn some basic spreadsheet skills. Because as accountants, without knowing any software, as for Excel, you must be on top of it. So these are the months, and then we have our forecasted sales units. Forecasted sales units. As I'm going, if you have any question, you can just make me pause. Forecasted sales units from the question, the question said, Sales in June and July 2021 are forecasted to be 10,000 units in each of the months. So let's go and just put them there, 10,000 units. Okay, 10,000 units. And go back to the question again. As a direct result of marketing expenditure of 95,000 cities in August, 
Sales are expected to be 11,000 in August and increase by 10,000 units in each month from September to December. So we go and do just that. In August, it's going to be 11,000. And this 11,000 is going to increase by 1,000. So when we are here, we can even do a simple formula. Here should be equal to this plus 1,000. And we can drag. The formula will work it out for us. If you have any question, you can draw my attention. The question says, sales from August, sales in August is 11,000, but this 11,000 is going to increase by 1,000 for the rest of the months. So 11,000 plus 1,000 is 12,000. This 12,000 plus 1,000 is 13,000 and so on and so forth. All right. Then we have selling price per unit because we're tr trying to prepare our sales budgets. So selling price per unit. That is 12 throughout. So let me just drag this 12 throughout. Yes, it was 12 cities. Okay, let me try to make it appear as accounting figures. So comma separators are here, good. Then our sales budget. Sales budget. will be is equal to and please also take the opportunity to know how i am exhibiting some basic spreadsheet skills it's equal to this cell because it has a ten thousand times the selling price per unit and there is this feature in excel that we call autofill so i've done the formula for just this entry i'll drag it across the program is made <clears throat> to be intelligent enough to do the right calculations. So this is our sales budget. So maybe let me do it this way. And do it, merge and center. Okay, so this is our sales budget. I can make these ones up here a little bolder. This is our sales budget. Then from our sales budget, we need to prepare our production budget. So we can come here and do production budget. Production budget, we can repeat the months, okay, so that each budget will have its right headings. So I'll do this is equal to this. I just want to pick the month from there and I can drag here. Yes. I want it to be bolder. So the input from the input for the production budget, first of all, is from the sales budget. So I'll do forecasted sales units. So I can do this is equal to this. And the forecasted sales units, when I drag, it will bring them, all of them here. I can bring the comma, yeah. And we have understood that this is how much, this is, these are the units that we think people will buy. But we intentionally add some buffer. So we are going to do add, sorry, add, planned and then inventory inventory of finished goods what well, the production budget is a budget for the finished goods and the planning ending inventory let's go to the question and see what was said about it it says the question says that where do we have that information inventories of finished goods at the end of each month 
are planned to be 20% of the expected sales for the following months. Inventories of finished goods. And that one you must understand because we have inventories of materials. And when you are preparing the materials budget, that is going to be affected. Here we are talking about the production budget and it is for the finished goods. Inventory of finished goods at the end of each month are planned to be 20% of the next, of the expected sales for the following month. So this is the meaning, this is English. So the planned ending inventory for June will be 20% of the forecasted sales for July. So here is equal to this times 20%. Yeah, that's what it, what it means, yes. And when I drag, the formula will complete the rest for me. Okay, and now let's see something. We need, we need a value for here. The value for here will be 20% of next year, January month. So sometimes because of those overlaps, we, or based on how the question is like, you might have to extend your tabling and other things beyond the specified period in the question. So I'm going to do extend it to, let's say two more months. Two more months will be okay, or maybe one month, so February. And then I'll drag here, February. And here I'll drag so that I'll, I'll be able to fill the series. Okay, so here will also be extended here up to February. And then I'll pull here and it will be the same thing. So that here we will be able to do the calculation of 20% of 16,000, which is 3,200. If I drag here, I'm only interested in the value for December because that's where the question is confining us to be. But if I want to show the figures for January, I can drag and it will show for January like this. Okay. So this is how we calculate the planned ending inventory. We need to add this to the forecasted uh, states. Yes, sir. Uh, please, uh the January you added. Yes, the, please. So the focus is says you need. You yes, said sir. it will continue or be the same as December 2021. December uh, 2021. Yes. Okay, let's go back to that question. I said um as a direct result of marketing expenditure of 95,000 in August 2021. Sales are expected to be 11,000 in August and to increase by 1,000 in each, 1,000 units in each month from September to December 2021. Sales after December 2021 are expected to remain at good at the December 2021 figure. That's very good. So here is expected to be 15,000 Thanks for that observation. 15,000. And here is also expected to be 15,000. Good. So now we get the, the other calculations also done correctly. Anybody with any other observation or question before I proceed? Amelia. Emilia, any, any question or any input? Comment, question, whatsoever. Lisbeth. David, any question or any comment? Okay, so let's move ahead. So when we add 
when we do some of the forecasted sales units and the planned ending inventory. So this is how we do it in Excel. You can use the function which is called sum. So sum bracket open, then the range that you are summing, bracket close. That's a very simple function. And as business students, accounting students to be specific at this master's level, you can never run away from this. In fact, if you don't know how to do some of these things, then you, don't, you are not in the business world. Okay. So this is the, the quantity of products that we have to make available to meet the expected demand and to also meet any uh, upsurge in demand. Okay, that's why we added the plant and then inventory. So when I drag, I can calculate for the rest of the months. I can calculate for the rest of the months. I don't think we need this one. Okay, so. Then we said that if, okay, this is how much we have to produce. But what if at the beginning of the period, we had some of the goods there? Then it means how much we have to produce should be this total minus what we already have there. That is why we less. So we have less closing, closing inventory. Hey, opening inventory. Sorry. Thanks for the alert. Less opening. Those ones that are already there. Opening inventory. And if you don't understand the logic, please let me know and explain it again. This is how much we expect people to buy from our sales budget. We are adding this because there can be unexpected upsets in demand. So planned and then inventory. Then it becomes the total that we have to produce. Total that we should make available. Total So let me give you this to so you. Total goods, total units to make available. Available to meet both expected demand and planned, unplanned, uh, uh, maybe uh, unexpected upsurge in demand. Then if you already have some of the product there, then how much we should produce should be what we should make available plus what is already there. So let's opening inventory. Opening inventory was said, let's go back to the question. Okay, so opening inventory is going to be simply the closing inventory from the previous month. For this one, for the first month, we don't have any indication from the question that gives us uh, the closing inventory for for March, e, May, for May. If the question gave us closing inventory for May, then that will be the beginning inventory for June. But there is none like that. So per calculation, we can put zero here. In business, we normally do not show it as this, we, as zero, like the mathematicians do. So we show it as dash. But the opening inventory for July will be the closing inventory of, of June. So let me just drag this and see if the, the, yes, the software is intelligent enough to pick this one. So let's see. So it knows that the closing inventory, sorry, the opening inventory for August will be the closing inventory of the previous month. Right, so I can just feel comfortable and drag. Yeah. So opening inventory for December is the same as closing inventory for November. Opening inventory for November 2,800 is, the, is actually the closing inventory of October. 
you have to understand that kind of logic. So this is how it will be like. Then we said less. So we come and do the calculation to know what we should actually go and produce. So it's equal to the total that we should have made available minus what we already have. Okay, so this is what we have to produce. So this is production budget. Any question? I want to feel you, I don't feel you. Any question? Hello? Any question? I hope everything is okay. Yes, sir. It's okay, sir. Okay. We are with you. So this is the production budget. And we have all underst understood the, the, concept, the concepts behind it. And it is based on that concept that we are building the budget in this way. Then if we have our production, so we know how many units to produce of the products. In June, 12,000 units. July, 10,200. Um, August 11,200, September 12,200, and so on and so forth. Then we have to go and estimate the materials that we need to kind of meet this production. So we do materials budgets, so raw materials budgets. materials budget let me just from materials budget we can i mean bring the the months so let me pick them from here and kind of drag Okay. We can write here production units because we need to know the units that we have to produce and then the material units required to finish to produce one finished good. So the, the starting input is equal to the production budget or the production units. So we can write the units of production. Or production units. Production units. And the figures are as we see in the production budget. For each of the months. They're just like we did. Okay, we are, we are not yet there. This is the unit that we are going to produce. For every one unit of the product, how many materials? What's the quantity of materials required? If you look at the information in the question, it says one unit of the product requires two kilograms. Two kilograms of the material. So for this 12,000 units of the finished good, every one unit will use two kilograms. So we can write here material requirements per unit. Material requirements. Which is two, two kilograms. It's going to be two, 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 two throughout. So two. And we can get total materials required or quantity of materials required to meet production. So quantity of raw materials to meet 
production. And that will be the product of, so I can do this times this, as I did the first one, but let me use another function. There's a function called products, which does multiplication of a range of cells. We have only two cell range of cells. So product of this and this, and then I can drag up to December. Okay, so I can do this. Okay. So we know the quantity of materials required to meet the levels of production in each of the months. But we said that when we get this quantity of materials, which we have to go and buy, because the materials, when we are using them, can undergo what we call normal loss. And because also of a possible upsurge in demand, which was not trapped in our estimation, we also add some sort of buffer inventory of raw material just to meet any normal loss or any unexpected uh, rise in the level of um, demand and therefore production. So we will do add planned and then inventory of raw materials. Okay, so the figures were in the question. Question says inventory Inventory of raw materials at the end of each month are planned to be 50% of the material required for the following month. Okay. So in a similar fashion with the ending inventory for the finished goods, only a difference in the percentage. This is 50%. That of the finished goods was 20%. So we do it same way. So we say that the planned ending inventory for June, we were not given any figures for May. They would have done 50% of May's um, materials requirements. Let's read that portion again. Inventories of raw material at the end of each month are planned to be 50% of the material required for the following month production. This is the materials required for the production of each month. And the ending inventory for June is estimated as, okay, is equal to 50%, sorry. 50% of the following month's material requirements. The following month is July. So 50% of this should be the ending, the planned ending inventory for June. And it has to move in that fashion. It has to move in that fashion. Okay, so it means that here, we also need to extend this to at least January. So that we can have the missing values. So we can have January's estimated unit of production. And when I extend it here, we can have the material requirement for next year, January. And 50% of that one will be the planned and then inventory for December because of the overlap. So sometimes you have to, your calculation is to stretch out a little beyond the period that the question is asking you to prepare, just like I'm doing. We needed the value for uh, December's 
ending inventory, which is 50% of January. So that means we need to extend the values to January so we can calculate the 50% of January, which is um, 15,000. 15, so 50% 50 of 30,000. 30,000 is the total material required for January 2022's production. And 50% of that is the planned ending inventory for December 2021. So that's the calculation. Any question? Okay. So once we have this, then we can say, we can call this the sum of the total materials required to meet the production plus the planned ending inventory. We can call it um, materials to make available. Total material that should be available. Available to meet the level of production and also to offer some safety. So materials, let me simply materials to make available, sorry. make available to let me quantity of materials let me add quantity to this quantity of materials to make available is the sum of the ones to meet specifically the production level plus any additional inventory we are adding just for safety purposes okay of course we can forget about this we are not too interested in this one for the next year so this is what it will be quality of materials to make available yes that's what we have to make available but what we what if we already have some at the beginning then what should be what we have to come and add to what is already there is what we go for so you will have our material quantity budget. Material quantity budget is also referred to as materials requirement budget. It's just the units. The materials, let me call it quantity. That's more uh, explanatory. Quantity budget. Materials quantity budget. Is the quantity of materials to make available, this one, minus what we already have available. Oh, sorry, so. So it means we should have less opening Opening inventory of materials, of raw materials. The opening inventory, let's go to the question. Of course, we don't even need to go to the question. The opening inventories are the closing inventories for the previous months. We don't have information for the previous month, which is May. So here can be now. And the opening inventory for July will be the closing inventory for June. Okay, and it continues like that. So now material quantity budget is equal to the quantity we should make available minus what is already there. Okay, so this is what we have as our materials quantity. They are in kilograms. So for the month of June, we should make for the month of June, this is the materials that uh, 
we have to go and buy the quantity of material that we have to go and buy the quantity that we have to go and buy is the materials quantity budget or materials uh, requirement budget and it is 34,200 kilograms July 21,400 kilograms August 23,400 kilograms and on and on and on then these materials each one is purchased at a price of two cities 40 pesos that is in the question two cities 40 pesos so we can put here so price let me make it more explicit. so material price per unit There's two cities, 40 pesos. And it doesn't change, it's constant for all the months. So we just drag the same value across all the respective months. So we now can have a materials purchase budget. Raw materials purchase budget. Of course, we say material, but we know it's raw material. So materials. Purchase budget equal to uh, materials quantity budget and the price per unit of material. Okay. I hope this is okay. Who has a question? Please. Someone should say something. The room is too quiet. I'm listening. Please speak. Hello? Okay, let's make progress. Materials purchase budgets. This is it. Then, yes, sir. Talk, we are listening. Sir, good, good afternoon, sir. Afternoon. Go ahead with your question, please, or your comments. My network, my network. Oh, sir, it's, uh, it's about complement. It's about complementing what you are teaching. It's 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 good. It's good. Um, we are all getting it. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much for following. Okay, so now that we have our materials budgets prepared, so we, let's center the, the heading. Uh, later, I will do it well. Materials, raw materials budget. Now, now that we have it prepared, let's look at other budgets. Uh, there was a direct expenses in the question. Okay, we had labor labor cost. So we have to prepare a budget for labor. We will need labor to produce to produce what is inside the production budget. We need labor in June to produce 12,000 units of ADEPA. Labor in July to produce 10,200 units of ADEPA. That's the product name. The product name is ADEPA. So we need to do the budget for labor. And the budget for labor, just like for material, is in two main components. The hours required budget, and then the labor cost budget. We need to know the hours and then the rate per hour. Look at the material budget. We looked at the quantities, kilograms, and then the price per kilogram. If you multiply the, the labor, Sorry, if you estimate the labor, sorry, the materials that are required for both the production and for any planning purposes, that gives you the, the quantity of materials, the material budget in quantity, of course, adjusted for by the opening inventory. 
when you monetize, so that will be in kilograms, when you monetize those quantities by multiplying the quantities by the price per unit, then you get a materials purchase budget. So in some other textbooks, they will tell you there are two uh, material budgets, materials quantity budget, also called materials requirement budget, and material purchase budget. In practice, it might not be split into two. Theoretically, you have to differentiate it so that people understand. But how I have demonstrated is just how it works out. This is the materials quantity budgets. The, only the quantity, so they are in kil kilograms or any units, if it is about some liquid in volume or whatever. Then price per kilogram. You are monetizing the quantity. That gives you the material purchase budget. We do similar thing for the labor budget. Labor is required to produce this material. We will first look at the hours, the labor hours that is needed to meet the production level. This is the, the production budget. This is what we have to produce. How many hours in each month are required to meet this production level? Unlike the way we did for material and production budget itself, we will not do anything like planned ending uh, labor hours. There's nothing like that. I mean, you just think about it, whether it makes sense to think of it in that terms. So there's nothing like, oh, OK, um, labor hours can can short. But technically speaking, we don't make those kind of analysis when we are doing the, the labor budgets. Even though in practice you can you can have an idea about that because when there is an upset in demand, that's the reason why we are doing this planning, plan and then inventory. Of course, it will also going to push our hours requirement, but all of them have been factored into this. So we are kind of at this point saying that uh, because we think things can go beyond just the forecast, that's why we did the planning. We added the closing inventory. So any labor hours that we estimate, any extra hour requirements, all of them have been factored in the analysis of the production. And therefore we don't add any extra hours for labor for any safety purposes again. So the labor budget will be, or can be simply specified as labor budget. You will need, our key input will be the production units because labor is going to produce the production. So we can, Pick the production unit from any of the budgets. We have even the production units from inside the raw materials, this one. But we picked it from the production. So it always makes sense to pick it from the right source. So we can type here production units. Production units. And pick the figures. OK, I think I forgot about my months. So let me drop, sorry. My months will come first. So it's equal to, let me call the months from here. And the reason why it is beautiful to do these cell references is that if I change the original input, the, the first cell that I am always referencing, if I change the value there, that value will change in all the reference cells. So you do not have to waste time to come and change individual entries. That's the beauty of using Excel because of the that property of relative cell referencing. Okay, so production unit is equal to, I'm calling the values from the production budget. So this is the production budget. This is the amount. For June is this. And I'll drag to December, it will pick them correctly. 
as they are in the production budget itself. Okay. So this is the production we have to meet. Then we need to estimate hours required. Hours required. Well, first of all, they gave us, let me look at the question. Okay, labor cost per unit. Well, they've simplified it for us. You see, some question could have come in this form, just like the way they did for the material cost. They gave you the material quantity per unit of the finished good and the price per unit of the material. So the material cost per unit of the finished good is 2 times 2.4. In that case, we wouldn't have first done total material requirement and multiplied by the price per unit. We would have done it at two times 2.4 already. And if, even if you go to the materials budget, you will see it's there. The materials budget, let me see. Okay, so these two, which we multiply by the production unit to give us a 24,200. We could have multiplied these two by the 2.4 and multiplied it by the 12,000 and these, these values to give us the material cost. Because at that point, we would have converted it to cost straight away material costs to meet the production. And then we'll come and find the cost of the closing inventory we are adding and so on and so forth. Yeah, so you have to understand how the question is framed and how to go about it. Here they've given us the direct labor costs per unit. So you see Ghana cities. So we, and we don't have enough information for us to even calculate hours hours per unit. Okay, let's see if we can do that. For every unit of the finished good, we pay labor one CD 80 pesos. And we can use that information to find the hours. This one, one uh, CD, 80 pesos, one CD, 80 pesos is arrived at as a product of hours, uh, sorry, rates, the number of hours times rates per hour. That gives us this term. So when we know this is missing, this is missing. When we know anyone, we can manipulate it with this to find the other. I wanted us to get the material, sorry, the labor budget prepared in such a way that we'll get the hours required first, and then we know the rates per hour. They, they never give the rates per hour in the question. So it means we cannot find the hours from that question. So what we'll do is that we'll do it a direct budget, direct labor budget. I'm saying all these things because some other question can be like giving you the rate per hour and the number of hours, the hours per, per unit of the finished good and the rate per hour. In that case, you can prepare the hours budget and then extend it to the labor cost budget. But for this particular question, that information is not there. So our labor budget, our labor cost budget is simply as the total units of production multiplied by labor cost per unit. The unit of the finished Product, which is one CD, 80 pesos.
Okay, so if one unit of the product costs one CD eighty per switch, then twelve units will cost the product of twelve thousand. Sorry. Twelve thousand and one to the eighty pesos, and I can extend this for the rest of the months. Okay, so this becomes our, our labor cost budget. I hope it is okay. Do we do we have any comments? Let me know before it's no, sir. okay. Let's hear you, please. Sir, no comment. No comment. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's move on. Let's move on. So we have our labor budget also done. Then in the question, we saw direct expenses. And we have direct expenses per unit. And we have some quantities of units. So we have to prepare our direct expenses budget. So we can come here, direct expenses budget. And as usual, because the direct expenses are on unit level, we will need to know first of all the units that we are going to produce. And it is a production expenditure. If you know the total units you are going to produce and they have given you direct expense per unit, then you can get a total direct expenses. That becomes the direct expenses budget. So production units, Production units, we can call, okay, first of all, I think I need my months. I always forget about this. Let me just call the months from, from just here. And production units for being lazy. Let me just, because I have the production unit right here. Let me just call them from here. It will be the same, but, but originally you have to call them from the production budget. So you let me do it as I want us to do it. It's equal to, I have to call them from the production budget because that's where the original values are. This is the production units. This is the amount of units we have to produce. Each of these units is costing, so direct expense per unit. Direct expense per unit. Each of these units is costing, let's go back to the question. One city, 20 pesos, 1.2. Across all the relevant months. And therefore, our direct expense budget is simply the product of. the units, total units, and the direct expense per unit. I hope that is okay. So this yes. is our direct expense budget.
Then we have overhead budget. If you go to the question, not directly here, but I'll get into the tail, sorry. The question said, overheads. For production, admin, and distribution, I expected to be 34,000 per month. Which amount includes depreciation charge of 12,000 per month? So we can prepare our simple overhead budget as follows. Total overhead, so let me bring my months first. It's equal to Then I can say total overhead cost as we have in the question. So thirty four thousand per month is directly in the question like that. But this amount contains a depreciation of 12,000 per month. And depreciation is not a cash flow. So for the benefit of preparing the cash budget, we can Yes, we have the total overhead cost. When we are preparing our income statement, that's what we will use. But also for the benefit of the cash budget preparation, let me do less depreciation so that we can get something that we can call a cash flow overhead cost. Because the 12,000 is part of it, it's not a cash flow. It is just um a notional cost so we want to split the notional costs from the cash flow cost so less depreciation of twelve thousand a month So I'll call the residual amount as cash, cash flow overhead cost. That's how I'm choosing to call it. You can call it any meaningful name. So it's equal to this minus this. Okay, so we are done with our overhead budgets. Okay, so we have prepared almost all the functional budgets. We can go ahead and prepare our budgeted income statement our budgeted income statement before we come and prepare the cash book i think it, that is in order so when we come to budgeted income statement
all of us as accounting students know how to prepare income statements. It's the same layout. So we'll have a sales revenue, which will be pulled from the sales budget. So let me have my months. So sales revenue Sales revenue, and this is from the sales budget. For each of the month, we said we'll be able to make sales of this. So I'm going to call the values right from there. It's equal to our estimated sales revenue from the sales budget. I'm going to do it up to month December. Okay. Then we less our costs. The traditional model has been less all the immediate costs, more or less direct costs to get your gross profits. Let's see. So we have materials, raw materials. We have We have raw materials, we have labor, we have expenses, we have overheads. That will be the production costs. So let me let me do a straightforward. So let's let's um First will be, so let me make it less. First of all, this is direct material. Very material costs. Then the subsequent ones will follow. Direct material costs, that will come from the direct material budget. The direct material Material purchase budget. So this is the cost you will pay for each of the months. Then when we come here, we can do direct labor or maybe simply labor. All right, I think it was labor in the question, so let me make it as it is. So, labor, labor costs, labor costs, we pull it from the labor budget. Direct expenses. Pull it from the direct expenses budget. So we can assume this to be our um, let's go back to the question. I want to read something about the overheads. Overheads for production, administration, and distribution. In fact, all those costs were put together. If we had been given production overheads separate from the non-production overheads, then we could have added production overheads as part of the total production cost. When we subtract it from the revenue, 
then we will get our gross profit before we come and subtract other non-production cost to get our net profit just to go by the traditional way we prepared it but because they are all put together we can also put everything together as uh, we are doing so we can have sorry we can have our overhead cost here so overheads because we cannot separate the overhead costs overhead costs we can simply pick it from since you are picking them you could have typed it straightforward because it was one figure as 34,000 in the statement of income or the income statement it will be the total but when we are preparing the cash flow because sorry cash budget because cash budget spe specifically deals with only cash flows that's why we have to take the depreciation away so for here our overhead cost will be the total overhead cost, which will be the 34,000 per month. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, please, um, the, the budgeted income statement, yeah. with, yes, the sales sir. with the sales revenue. Yes, please. I think you have to do some calculation over there before. OK, let's go there. Uh, okay so please let's know what we have to do okay so from from what we have above <clears throat> it said that 25 percent has to be paid in the month in which it was incurred and 25 percent of the following month so yeah yes but we picked the total figures for the sales we didn't do that calculation but remember we are doing budgeted income statement so the timing of receipt of money and the amount is not the issue here. In your income statements, in every company's income statement, the reported sales revenue is the total of the sales revenue, whether it is cash or it is credits. It is your cash budget where you take into account where, I mean, how much you actually receive in what period. For the income statement, uh all the sales can be on credit to be received in three months but we still write them as sales we do not wait till the money is received before we write it as sales cash the cash um budget that one we write cash when cash is received or we write a cash at where the cash is expected to be received because it's budgeting they are all expectations so we'll put it where and when we expect the cash to drop in the income statement that is not there if the sales are made in this month the whole of the sales which part will be received when and which parts uh, will be received when is not a point i don't know if i'm making myself clear this is yes. the income income statement. I get, I get this one. So yeah. but this one was not part of the requirement, but we can do that one as well. Which one? Uh, the budgeted income statement. No, the requirement was prepare all the relevant budgets. So how would you know that this is not part of it? Okay. How do you yeah, let's continue. I, I understand this one. So let's continue. Okay, the requirement in the question, and not specifically for you, because any question you ask is for the whole of the class. So any confusions on them need to be cleared. Statement, the budgeted income statement, income statement is income statement. When you make sales in each of the months, all the sales are recorded in the month. Once the sales become conclusive, the sales contract become conclusive. Whether the sales will be received in month one 20 percent month two 20 percent that is not a headache in the income statement so don't confuse the income statement budget with the cash budget that's where your confusion is coming from when we get to the preparation of the cash budget then what you were raising will come in because we have to know when the cash will drop 
and what amount will that cash be? Because we want to know our cash position. The income statement only shows our profits. And that's why the, the, the overhead costs, you should even get it from the overhead costs. The reason why I said it should be 34,000, which includes the depreciation of 12,000, because in the income statement, we are not doing a cash flow statement. The cash budget is a cash flow statement. I hope you are, you are, you are okay. Okay, so this will be 34,000 throughout up to December. And I guess these are all the costs we have, yes. So all other things being equal, this becomes your budgeted. So as we do in accounting, let me try to follow the tradition. Let me put here negative. I just want to force the figures to be put into parentheses, just to follow the tradition. That'll be a lot of work for me. But it doesn't really it doesn't really matter if you leave them as a test because I've already done okay, I think I should even reverse that. I have already narrated it as less. So I don't need to bring the parenthesis. If I had forgotten about the less, this word less here, then I have to put the figures in parenthesis to show their their expenditures. So I can do I can sum the expenses and have a sub some subtotal. So uh, let me do total expenses. Oh, total okay, total expenditure. That will be the sum of all the costs. So from here to here. Let me bold in this one to make it separate. Okay, so that's the sum of the costs. Then our profits. is equal to our revenue minus our costs. So it's equal to this minus this. And this is going to give us loss. And let's see for the other months. OK, we have some profits. It's only the first month that will have loss. So this is a budgeted income statement based on the figures we have in the question. Any question, any comments? Okay, let's proceed. Then now let's come to our cash budget. Cash budget. The cash budget is a cash flow statement. So here, the timing of when money comes is very important. And before I even prepare the cash budget, let me ask this question. And I'm putting marks on this question. If you attempt and you get it right, I'll give you the marks. Two marks. Now look at all the budgets that we have prepared. From sales through production up to overhead costs budget. From which we have prepared our budgeted income statement. And from our income statement, we know we will make, we will not make profit in June, but we'll make profit of 4,000, a little above 4,000 in July, 8,240 in August, 12,440 in September, above 16,000 in October, more than 21,000 in November, and so on and so forth. We know our profit. Why do we have to prepare a cash budget? 
even though we have our profit, which is telling us about how the business is doing. What will the cash budget do different? What would it make us know different from what these other budgets are making us know? And that preparing the cash budget is very crucial. Two marks, if you get it correct. It's a question for all of us. Hey, I have only seven people in class. The rest are gone. Lisbeth. Yeah, yeah Joe. Joe, we are listening uh, to you. Uh, the reason why we have to prepare the cash budget is for cash availability or receipt of cash that might probably uh, that uh, the organization has to probably know. Okay. But if we have the income statement, can't we use the what the cash budget will give us? Can't we get it from the income statement? We can, we can, but uh, sometimes it has to be based on cash and cash equivalent. That's so. How does the income statement not give us the cash and cash equivalent, which the cash budget will give us? How does the income? How is the income statement deficient in the work that the cash budget will do? I want your explanation to be to be at the level that is supposed to be master level. <laughs> is that one? Somebody can also assist me. <laughs> yeah, someone can come in. David Question. David. Yes, sir. Say something before you die. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, sir. Hey, the reason why we have to prepare the cash budget is that. A uh, considering the uh, the budgeted budget income statement, you know the profit that you have realized in the in the preparation of the the cash budget, the cash that will arrive for the let's say January. In January is the beginning. Will be the opening for the following months. That's for the cash budget. But for the budgeted income statement, we did not prepare in that way. So preparation of the cash budget is important. That will enable the organization to know the, the, the cash that they have at the end of the period. OK. But please go and read about this question. None of your answers okay. can, be, can be accepted as correct. So we have to go and read about it. I will say something briefly about it. But you have to go okay. and read. I'll All say right. just one thing. You know, okay, okay, let me ask first. What is a cash flow? Since you guys have done financial management, you have done um, cash flow statement preparation, you've done investment appraisal, which is fully on, on the basis of cash flows. So you have to teach me what a cash flow is or what a cash flow is not so you can we are asking what is a cash flow you can answer it from the reverse what cash flow is not Peter Dominic. Uh, sir. yeah joseph you want to try let's give it to mohammed mohammed has not talked for some time now well, my network has been taking me out and in. But uh, yeah, if, yeah, I, yeah. if I've heard is... you right, the cash flow is a statement that shows the inflow and outflows of cash and cash equivalent in the financial statement. Okay. So let me ask again, following your, your answer. Hello, sir. Um, Hello. Is the income statement. Hey. Yes, Mohamed. Hello. Mohamed, I can hear Hello. you. Can you hear me? Oh, my God. I'm taking you out again. Hey, John. I don't know what is happening. John Benya. Uncle yeah. John. I don't know. 
my network. I don't know what is happening. You don't use a proper network. Hello. You use... Vodafone hey. internet is better than MTN internet. Joe, sorry, Joe, you wanted to speak before I gave the opportunity to Mohammed. Uh, so, so that's all that I wanted to say, but uh, he has said it. Oh, okay. So let me ask, is the income statement a cash flow statement? It's a question to the whole class. Is the income statement a cash flow statement? Because in the income no, statement, see, it's not. It's not. We have we have sales revenue, which is receipt of cash. We have direct material, which is payment of cash. So can we say the income statement is a cash flow statement? Mr. Yale, you wanted to speak. So I said no. It's not a cash flow statement. The, the, it's not a cash flow the, statement. Yes. Okay, that's the, good. How is it not a cash flow statement? Uh, the income statement is made up of cash and uncash items. Okay. It's the whole summary of everything that a company does, whether accrued or paid or yet to be paid, everything. But with a cash flow, it's it deals with a cash. When we say flow, it means you can identify money going out and you can identify money coming in that's the cash flow this guy that's the cash flow cash flow so you cannot okay. use so, profit okay so, yeah Yale, your, your answer is, is is perfect so let me follow with this from the income statement because you just concluded that the income statement is not a cash flow and you are further explaining that cash flow statements, if you, wish, you should even take a cue from the word flow, is a statement that tracks physical movement of cash. Cash in or cash out. Cash out will be an outflow, which is an expenditure. In will be an income or revenue. If you look at the income statement as we just prepared, you will see that there is some flow this revenue, yeah, someone can argue it's a flow. It is something that will flow to the organization. This direct material, it will, it will be an, it's also a flow, specifically an outflow, because you have to go and pay money to the suppliers of the raw material. We have to pay money to the laborers, it's an outflow. So from, from what about the income statement, that will be not a flow. That will not meet the definition of a flow, and therefore the income statement not qualifying as a cash flow statement. Yeah, it's a question to the whole class. So, there are plenty. Like so say, let's, let's cite some examples so that we all okay. learn from it. One is the depreciation. It's Good. Just One estimate. is the depreciation. Good. Good. And, and the another one can be um, uh, creditors. Okay. We, we've not paid them yet, but we have we have taken goods from them. That one. Too. Okay. So. Uh, Good. So the typical example is the car. Sorry, the depreciation. The depreciation has been added, 12,000 has been added to give us the 34,000. So a depreciation of 4,000. I think I should have even separated the depreciation from the actual overhead cost. Let me do that. Depreciation was 12,000 per month.
and and the 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 actual overhead costs. was would be I can take this one from the from the budget. If you look at the overhead budget, that would be what I described as the cash flow overhead cost. Would be this. It will actually come to the same conclusion. So total expenditure. Now let me see the formula. I may have to modify the formula. Total expenditure will now be this. Okay. Okay, so this, this is the best way in terms of presentation. So now we have the overhead here. This overhead in the income statement has been treated as, as if, yes, as an expenditure. And the expenditure when we ask, okay, uh, show the receipt and which person that we paid this money to, that one cannot be done. It was never a flow. It never this kind of expenditure that we have put here on the income statement never resulted in any explicit outgoing, any explicit payment of cash to anybody. This is just a paper cost. It's a notional cost. All right. But these things find themselves on the income statement to produce the profits. But they don't represent cash, cash coming or cash going. So if you want to know our cash position, to know what we use cash, they say is the blood, is the life blood of the organization. You can have profits very big. That profit can be produced in such a way that it does not represent cash. You can have so many companies have that experience. They show a lot of profit on the income statement, but they can't even pay their workers. Because cash is different from profit. For example, cash. This profit has this element of depreciation, but this is never any cash. We can have something like, we can have some other incomes. For example, um, if we have something like, uh, Let's say provision for doubtful debt. That is also will be treated as an expenditure, but we don't pay anybody for that. Along the line, we can have something we call reduction in provision for depreciation, which will be treated as an income. But let's go and see the money. Which bank account has that money? It is not money. It is not income. It doesn't come as any, any money that we can use to pay any worker. But they all will feature on the income statement as inflows and outflows to produce the profit. So the profit figure does not speak availability of cash. Apart from that, timing, the profit statement does not show the timing by which the cash will be available. For example, this 120,000 Ghana cities sales revenue in June. In the income statement, it will be 12,000 in June. Whether the 12,000 will be actually received in June or not is not a point in the income statement, but it is a big point in the cash flow statement or the cash budget. In the cash budget, uh, in addition to knowing how much cash is available, we also have to know when the cash will be there so that those periods that we wouldn't have enough cash to be able to meet our obligations, we can make planning for them. We can go for some overdraft, we can go for some loan, we can sell some 
uh, old fixed assets, we can do a number of things to raise money to kind of close that gap or to remove the gap, All right? So that's the key difference between cash budget and therefore a cash flow statement and the income statement. And at your level, if your question is put like this, you should be able to explain this at a very professional level. This is master level learning. So please go and read about it. Right, so now this is the budgeted income statement. So we are coming to the cash budget. After the cash budget, we'll break and then come back for the next phase. The cash budget is purely cash flow statement. So when cash will be received is very important and the amount of the cash is also very important. You let's bring our amounts here first. Okay, so let me give, if and this one you should have gotten it from your reading, but let me give the general framework for the cash budget. The framework is simple. So the cash budget, we want to know all our explicit cash receipts. So we normally have a heading that we call, or you can title it anyway, but we normally say receipts. This will all be inputs. Sorry, inflows, cash inflows. Receipts. So in our case, a receipt of money is in the form of cash sales, sorry, cash sales because the question said 25% of the sales for each month are paid for during the month that they okay. So if we go here, we know our sales. Okay, so let me try to do something. Let me try to collapse all the other budgets so we can see the sales budget and the cash budget only. After that, I will, I will kind of... Uh, show for scene for us to see things. So sales, cash sales. In, in June, sales will be 120,000. 20, 25% 20, of this will be received in the same June. You see, see the concepts about the cash budget. It's a cash flow statement. We want to know when cash actually will be received and will be paid. It doesn't go by the accrual concept. The accrual concept is when the sales is made, when the contract, whether the cash <clears throat> uh, involved with the sale has been received or not, we still recognize that there's sales. The cash budget doesn't go by that concept. Cash budget is only when the cash is received if it is not received it is not cash yet so it doesn't find itself in a cash budget so 25 percent of this so it's equal to 25 percent of this twenty five percent the formula didn't complete twenty five percent times this times June sales will be received in the same June. 25% of July sales will be received in the same July. 25% of August sales will be received in the same August and so on and so forth. Then the remaining 75% will be received in the following months. Okay, so this 25% of all the sales we can drag, then we know them, this is cash sales. Then you can say, sorry. Receipts from receivables. So 
So the receipt from receivables, you, you could have even prepared a separate schedule called receivables collection schedule. And then you refer that those figures into the cash budget. But in this case, we are doing it straightforward because the collection pattern is not too complex. It is only 75% once. Sometimes the collection pattern can be a little complex. Question can tell you all sales are made on credit. Then 20% of the sales is received in one month following this, the month of sale. Another 20% is received in two months following the month of sale. Another 20% is received in three months following the month of sale. Such kind of collection pattern is a little bit complex. So it will make sense that you build a separate receivables collection schedule to track all those details so that you don't kind of make the cash budget become too clumsy. But for this particular question, I mean, it was just a split, 25%, 75%. So we can do it straightforward here. Receivables, receipt from, from receivables. And it is 75% for the following month, which, which means that 75% of the sales made in June will be received in July. So, so I will come and stay here in July and do this formula. It's equal to 75%, but it is 75% of the sales in June. And then in August, we'll receive 75% of the sales in July. That's how it goes. It overlaps by at least one month. That's how it goes. We don't have the sales figure for May. If we had it, we could have been able to calculate 75% of sales, sorry, May sales, which will be received in June. So per, the way the question is, it means, or we can assume that there is no sales in May, which is not too realistic, but that's per the figure. So here will be zero. In most questions, they will give you that figure, the sales revenue to be generated in May, so that you can calculate the 75% of it, which will be received in June. But if you look at this question, all of such figures were not given. So we put zero there. OK. So now our total receipts. Will be the sum of these two entries. And by doing it this way, remember that we have taken care of the amount of the cash and the timing of the cash. And that's one of the key things that a cash flow statement provides, the amount and timing of cash so that we can do proper planning. So this will be our total receipts. Then we go to our payment or disbursements. Payments and the payment we have a series of them, and we have finished preparing all the payment budgets. We only need to look at for the cash flow purposes the timing, the timing of the payment of those expenditures. As for the amounts, we have calculated through all the budget we have done. What is left is the timing. So when we come to um here it says materials are paid for in the month following purchase this is giving you information about timing so when we come here we can say material costs the 
material cost is saying that we pay for materials one month following the time of purchase. Now I need to collapse. I need to kind of bring all the other things. Okay, so let's go to the materials budgets. The material budget, this is how much we have to pay for each of the months, June, July, August. But the payments or the cost of materials in June, which is 82,080 cities, will be paid in July. That's the timing of the payment. The amounts have been already calculated here. So what we do in the cash budget is that we come here for the month of June, the amount that we show here should be the material cost for May, but we don't have that one. So just for numbers purposes, we can put zero there, but the amount that will be paid in July with respect to material cost will be the material cost for June. So we go to material cost and click here and bring it to be here. And then we can drag, it fills the series in that good order. Yes. So it's just kind of slant by one month. So this cost here is June's material costs, which will be paid in July. The costs here in August is July's material costs, but it will be paid in August in that order. Then let's look at the other costs. We have labor costs. Let's go and read about, we have already prepared the quantum of the labor costs, but let's look at if there is anything about the timing of payment of the labor costs. Labor, labor and indirect expenses are paid for in the month in which they occur. So they are paid for in the same month. So we just go and do that. So it's not difficult. It's about amount and timing. So labor cost is same for the month. So June will be the same cost in June. So let's go to the labor budget. Yes, so June is June. July is July and so on and so forth. So this is it. And it said direct, let's go and read it again. Labor and direct expenses. Direct expenses is also paid in the same fashion. So direct expenses. Go to direct expenses budget. And then, okay, so let me, to, it's equal to that one is same month for same month. Direct expenses. So this is it. Okay, so then it's low with, apart from direct expenses, we have overheads. And the overheads, there was an issue of some non cash flow thing, which was the depreciation of 12,000. Overheads for production admin and distribution is expected to be 34,000 per month, which amount includes depreciation charge of 12 per month. These overheads are payable in the month in which they occur. So it's also the same thing as we have done. But depreciation is not a cash flow, so we take depreciation away. So we come here, we say overheads. Same month for same month. So we go to the overhead cost budget. It's equal to, yes, this one, the one I described as cash flow overhead, which has taken care of the depreciation, we have subtracted the depreciation. So we take this amount, 22,000. Okay, 
So I think these these are all the costs. Or do we have any other costs? No. So these are all our payments. So we can calculate total payments. Total payment, which is just the sum of all the payments. Let me do it just like we did. I guess we don't see. Okay. Then we have to do for each period how our receipts are doing against our payments. Let me build in the receipts. So, and then the payments, because you are looking at the two. You have to know how are you doing in receipts against payments. So we calculate what is called surplus. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please, uh, from the question, we had <clears throat> uh, marketing expenditure of 95000 in August. Wow, wow, good, 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 and, good, good. That is and, what we said the sales, 95000 Yes, and, and what? One, the firm pays interest, but that one, they didn't bring yes, any the, the interest. They didn't come, I've seen that one. The firm pays interest, so maybe... Uh, in uh, I mean to update this question, I'll print the amount of the interest so we can fix them. But as it stands, the firm pays interest in March and September. That's all. They didn't give the amount, so yes, we cannot yes. really. Yeah, yes. Okay. But thank you for alerting us on the ninety-five thousand as advertisement expenditure. So that should go into the cash budget, the payment side. Thank you very much. So let me just insert one row here and do advertisements or adverts simply adverts adverts and it happened in august the other was done only in august and we paid nine five one two three thank you Okay, so let me check the formula and see if it has. Okay, so let me extend the formula to here, update the formula, and then we can do this. Okay, good. So now we have our total expenses against our total income. So we are going to calculate surplus for the period or deficit, if any, is equal to total receipt minus total payments. So we have a deficit. The deficit is in parentheses. And then we drag for the rest of the periods. OK, so we have deficit from months June, July, August, we begin to make, show some surpluses in, from September going. Okay, so just this alone, if all other things are equal, should tell you that, okay, for each period from June to December, these, this is the cash you, it will be available in your company, and these are the expenditures that you will have to make. The gap is a negative of 28,000 for June. If you don't do something about this gap, it will show up. Either you will not be able to pay your suppliers for the materials and you get problems with them. You may be able to pay your workers, you get problems with your workers, and so on and so forth. Things will not go bad. So how, how do you finance this deficit? Because you go and 
raise some overdraft facility with your bankers. So you can pay your suppliers for the material, pay your workers for the labor costs and so on and so forth. Right, so all other things being equal, let's say everything is just this way. It gives you the biggest opportunity for you to plan before bad things happen. Okay, but we were told that um, June began with a cash balance. June began with a cash balance of 50,000. June began with a cash balance of 50,000. So it ended. Uh, June ended with a cash balance of, okay, good. Cash balance at the end of June, yes, is 50,000. So let's go. So June, this month, ended with a cash balance of 50,000. So that will be the beginning cash for July. Let me look at the question. Actually, uh, I meant when I was setting this question, I meant that uh, the cash balance at the end of it should be let's make it May or at the beginning of June. You can make it any 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 one of the two. All right, let's modify the question. Let's modify the question. Is the beginning cash balance for for June or the ending cash balance for May? Okay, so beginning cash balance for June. I will repost the question with the with the correction. The beginning cash balance for June is fifty thousand. So we put fifty thousand here. So that is opening cash balance. Fifty thousand. So when we add it to the deficits, that will give us the closing cash balance for that month. This plus this. So this will be the closing cash balance for June. Please, let's all make the correction in the question. This figure here. Make it the cash balance at the beginning of June or the cash balance at the end of May. Any one of them works the same way. Okay, so this is closing cash balance. Closing cash balance. Then, <clears throat> The closing cash balance for for June becomes the opening cash balance opening cash balance for July. So opening cash balance for July, this is equal to the closing cash balance for June. And we can calculate this one, the closing cash balance, which will be the sum of the surplus and the opening cash balance. So we now can drag, the calculation is the same for all the months. Drag this one here, come and drag this here, this here, this here, this here. This here this here, this here, this here. When I finish, I'll check the validity of the formulas. 
Let me see. Okay. So let me be here and see. Okay, so everything is okay. So with the cash budget completed, we will realize that <clears throat> for the months of June, we will have no problem with our cash position. We even have a cash surplus of 22,000 per the figures we are dealing with. In the month of July, there's a surplus of 7,000. We begin to get some deficits in August of 71,000, about 71,000, which we need to find ways to finance. We have deficit 51,000, even though it is decreasing. Another deficit 26,000. But we begin to get some positive cash flows from November. And it increases even further in December. So this will be our cash cash flow position. Any question? Any question, class? Sir. But now all of them are going. Yes, please, Mohammed. I have an issue because for the cash budget aspect, my network is very bad. So I'm just praying that maybe the recorded Yes, yes, I'm recording. Well, so I'm, I'm, so I'll get to, I've, I've not been able to follow the card, but sorry, yes, sir. Sir. yes, I'll make the Thank video available immediately. Thank you very much. Yes. Get finished here. Yeah. Any yeah. other issues, please, class? So, we have come to the end of the tutorial on cash budget. So, we have concluded the chapter on budgeting. What is left is something that you yourself must read, for example, something like capital budgeting you did it from financial management go back and read over your notes and then capital budgeting is also done it's part, it should be part of budgeting but because you did it there there's no need to waste time also read on a budgeted income statements it's, it follows the same fashion if you have the figures you just put them there and read the theoretical aspect of budgeting that one is in the textbook. It's richly done in the textbook. Importance of budgetary control, all the reading stuff, because you write exams on them. If there are no issues to deal with, then this is where we'll end the first phase of the class. We are breaking for some 30 minutes. But the fact is, the next uh, topic that we are supposed to treat is relevant costing so i am going to share the video with you right away on the platform and that is the lecture so use the hours for the second phase of the lecture to watch the video and watch the video in addition to reading the text you can open to i think chapter 22 or so of the textbook or you, yes, just locate where relevant question is and look at it. I'm also going to share you the video link. The video link I'm going to show you is not a full lecture, but we have the full discussion in the textbook. I will follow up uh, with another video to complete the rest of the topic. So that's how we're going to do about it. Any issue? Yeah, let's talk. We have just ended the class, so we are discussing any other matters. Okay, uh, Mohammed. I think it's okay. So I will, will go through and watch that. Yes, and also read the textbook because the textbook contains much information that I cannot read all the textbook. Okay. If you look, yes, so okay. you have to also read the textbook. I don't have the textbook number. Hello, Mohammed. Mohammed, you said something I didn't hear. I uh, know. I'm saying that because uh, for now I don't have the textbook, so I'll just speak. Okay, so make sure you get it. Talk to Amelia. Watching the videos and the Saturday when we, when we meet at Takrad, I'll pick, and I'll pick it from okay. Amelia Saturday when we meet at Takrad. That's okay. That's okay.
But the books are in Takrade right now with Emilia. So you can make arrangement with her to get it because we don't have so much time. Yes, sir. To, uh -huh. So if you can strike any arrangement, someone is there and that person can come to your place one of these days, the person can take it from a million and give it to you. We've deposited all the books with a million. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so this is where we bring the discussion to a close. Okay. Yeah, Joe. Uh, Joe sir, uh, you made mention of capital budgeting. Yes, sir. Uh, you said you said that capital budgeting last semester, so we need to go back and probably uh, read your text your on that. that. Yes, and uh, you did it. You did it. Yes, I'm through just, financial I'm management. Ah, uh, so we don't have it in our uh, in our current supply textbook. No, 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 no. But I can I can provide you additional notes on that only on that. Okay, okay. Then we'll be yeah, then, 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 then we'll notes. be happy with it. Yes, I'll do that. I'll provide you additional notes on that. In fact, we will treat it, but because, you know, this is always a crash course. Mohamed, your hand is up. I'm coming. Uh, sometimes we are not able to do all the things within the time they say we should do them. So the things that we have already done that we can just go and revise, we give it to you to go and do that while we get more time to focus on the things that you cannot understand if you should read on your own. So if you're able to do all the things that we have some time, we'll go back, we'll go over the uh, capital budgeting together. Okay, where was it? Okay, thank you. Yeah, Mohammed, your hand is up. Please, please say, are we meeting again for the day or we have ended the, the lecture for the day? Today, yes, sir. we have ended... So you were saying that we are breaking. We have ended the first session of the lecture. The second session okay. is a video. And I'm going okay. to send you the video link. So use the time for the second session to watch the video okay. that okay. read the okay. textbook. Yes, yes but yes. that one is up to you whether you will do it or you will not do it. But this is how that lecture is also done. And the second phase. Okay, of today's lecture starts on a new topic called relevant question which i'll share you the video and the topic is i think in on page 20 sorry chapter 21 or 22 of the textbook so use the remaining half of the allocated hours about one and a half hours to deal with that topic yes sir. okay so mm -hmm. thank you thank very you. much all for your for your attention right so this is where we